people would be surprised at the amount of life down there and the colour as well. It's not all grey, murky drab things creeping and slithering around on the seafloor. There's all sorts of really beautiful creatures down there. Sand and gravel is a vital ingredient in concrete which forms the fabric of our built environment. A fifth of the sand and gravel used for building work in the UK and half of that used in London comes from the seabed. As planning rules make it harder to quarry on land, that's increasing. But an amazing array of marine life lives on this seabed. These pictures aren't from the Caribbean, but from the English Channel. The seabed between here on the south coast of England and northern France is particularly rich in marine wildlife. It's also important for commercially valuable fish. So if it's so wonderful, why is the government set to approve plans to strip mine thousands of tonnes of that seabed and use it here on land? This is the reason marine sand and gravel or aggregates. It's one of the main ingredients in concrete. Now, this dredger carries about two and a half thousand tonnes, all taken from the seabed. It'll go to make around 50 houses. Plans, for example, in southeastern England with the Thames Gateway by the government to build many, many new, much needed homes. And marine sand and gravel will make a vital contribution to fulfilling this aim. Until now, the main source of marine aggregates has been the seabed off East Anglia. As Countryfile reported three years ago, dredging here is blamed for exacerbating coastal erosion. Now these supplies are running out. We've located major reserves in the Eastern English Channel, which will, if granted, give the marine aggregate industry the ability to supply these vital materials well into the future. So dredging companies want the government's permission to exploit these huge sand and gravel reserves in an area called Median Deep. The areas shown in red are where they want to dredge, but they're slap in the middle of vital spawning grounds for cod and place, as well as a high concentration of scallops. Fishermen here in Hastings rely on all those species and, understandably, they're not happy about the plans to dredge. Well, you see what we've got today. We, you know, we're scrimping and scraping, and I mean scrimping and scraping. If they're going to dredge on the nursery grounds and the fish are going to go somewhere else and it'll be the end of it, definitely. Get another job. <laughs> A lot of our vessels are now scalloping. What's the impact on the scallop fishery? What's the impact on the overwintering position of the sole when they migrate to deep water? There's not enough work being done to look at the impact on the fishery before licenses are granted. The sandy seabed of the Eastern Channel supports some of the richest marine life in Europe, much of it seen here for the first time. Every square centimetre is covered in life, particularly attached creatures like sponges and sea squirts, but also mobile life such as starfish, crabs, hermit crabs and all sorts of fish. Although the aggregates industry has done a lot of research, what they've revealed is that the area seems to be remarkably rich in life and is likely to be very slow to recover from dredging, perhaps taking 10, 20 or more years, or even not recovering at all. So we're very concerned that in licensing a new area, one that seems to be particularly rich in life, without having a, really an adequate understanding of what the impacts will be, is not in keeping with the government's policy on sustainable development. Aggregate from the seabed being used to replenish a beach near Chichester, which the sea is steadily eroding away. Conservationists fear that dredging in median deep will increase the erosion of this coast. The Environment Agency are working very hard behind us to replenish this beach. What, in your opinion, is causing it to erode so quickly? Dredging, Charlotte. How? The relationship between the beach and what is lying on the seabed, and if you remove the stuff on the seabed, then that will impact what's on here, here on the beach. If it's close by, then it'll happen quickly. But if it's further away, then it'll just take longer before the impact is felt. 
Well, there's a vast amount of research now that conclusively shows that dredging does not cause coastal erosion. In many places around the UK, erosion is a natural process, and the marine aggregate dredging industry represents a solution to coastal erosion in some areas. We're able to supply large tonnages of sand and gravel direct to beaches to restore them. And the offshore bank then protects the coast from further erosion. So it's essential we preserve those banks. We shouldn't dredge them, we shouldn't take material from them and dump them on our inshore beaches, because what that does lowers the banks, lets more wave energy in, and therefore causes more erosion. 30% of the UK's marine aggregate is exported to countries like Holland and Belgium, where they severely restrict dredging to protect their own coastlines. Really, we shouldn't be exporting the material to those countries so that they can protect their coastline at the expense of our coastline. It doesn't make sense. Now, officially, no decision has yet been made as to whether dredging in median deep should be allowed or not. But Countryfile has seen a letter from DEFRA which recommends that, subject to certain conditions, dredging should go ahead. It seems very strange for DEFRA to take this approach when you think they really should be looking after the interests of the fisheries and not particularly the dredging companies, but unfortunately it's all to do with money and fishermen come very low in the act. This is a controversial decision. The government receives royalties on every shipload of gravel, worth millions every year. But DEFRA is confident that provided dredging is properly monitored, any environmental damage can be minimised. The final say goes to the Deputy Prime Minister, John Prescott. If those materials were not available, there would inevitably be very rapidly a shortage of building materials, which would increase the costs of construction. So we're hopeful that the government will permit additional licences to make sure that the industry can supply these essential materials well into the future. Nine applications for dredging in Median Deep are currently in their final stages, with one more in the pipeline. A government announcement is expected in the next few months. Here in Holland, it's a very different picture. I'm in the Dutch port of Eemuiden, where the fishing industry here is still very active. Great Yarmouth's only about 100 miles in that direction. But the attitudes of the two countries towards aggregate extraction couldn't be more different. In Holland, they stopped dredging five years ago. The Dutch fishing industry is worth around £260 million a year, and as one of Europe's biggest fishing ports, Eemuiden plays a big role. The port guards its quarry jealously and can't afford to see fish stocks affected. It's meant that aggregates have taken a back seat, with far less sand and gravel extracted in recent years and none for the external market. A few years ago, uh, we decided only to dredge for our own purpose, because uh, if we trade with the, the sand, then uh, we think it is uh, environmental unfriendly. The Netherlands has a well-established reputation as being eco-aware. It sent four green MEPs to the European Parliament, based this week in Strasbourg. And it's at this political level that the dredging debate's been raging between countries. We stopped dredging so because we want to protect our coast. And we're importing big stones now, basically from France and from Germany, to make dikes to protect the basically sandy coast in Holland. It was basically a decision in 1990 that the coastline as it is should be as it is and should be not changed compared to before. And at the same time, we have also a decision now that the habitat, the birds, the animals and also the sea line should be protected, at least a short coast line. It seems to me to be particularly silly to be damaging our ecosystems to such a great extent, basically for the profit of exports, so that needs to be stopped straight away. The other issue is that we need to look at how much um, of existing uh, building materials are being recycled when uh, buildings are, are knocked down or demolished and so on. So what we want to see is what is done, uh, as I understand it, quite a lot in the Netherlands, is to see far more recycling of those building materials. We'd like to see legislation coming in that would actually mandate uh, companies to be doing that first. Having prioritised both their fish stocks and their coastline over the aggregate industry, the Dutch have moved dredging down the agenda. They say they have enough material without plundering the sea for more. And when they're short, they're content to rely on exported British aggregates to fill the gap. Judith Moritz for the East at Westminster in the Netherlands.